Previously on Tales from Tetheria, the dwarves Bubbles and Bragnock arrived at their late uncle Tulax's manor for the reading of his will, where they discovered that the acolyte Riley was also invited. Before the will reading could begin though, Cornelius Bunderman released Sir Reichel Javis from the amulet in which he had been imprisoned. Jebediah's will stated that anyone wishing to receive their inheritance must spend one night in the manor. Shortly after the will reading, the group was accosted by zombies. They were able to defeat the zombies, but Bragnock's favorite bear did not survive the encounter. As they began to search the manor, Riley was separated by a spinning bookcase and came face to face with a fearsome lizard creature. Tales from Tiberia. Uh, no. Now this no, creature, no. this creature vaguely resembles a lizard folk or something like that, but it looks like it's had some sort of experimentation or something done on it. It doesn't look normal. Where its snout should be, it's it's bent down, its fangs are protruding at odd angles, and its its eyes are uneven. One of the eyes is higher up and one is lower. There is one lone candle in the back providing light, and you can kind of see right past the lizard man is a staircase. You're all gonna have to roll for initiative. 16. I got a two. And a 21 for Bubbles. Bubbles sees the bookcase spin around. Is she gone? Is she okay? Does she need protecting? Let's go. Well, hold on now. She seemed a bit weird, eh? Like, maybe she wasn't even real to begin with. Maybe. Uh, maybe. A discussion is happening outside. Riley, you're face to face with a lizard. It's lurching towards you. I immediately grab the book again and hope that it flips me back. Mm -hmm. Nothing happens. No! Dang it! Okay. I will. Uh, uh, I will let you make another action, though. We'll count that as a bonus action. I would like to to try to perceive around me to see if there was another book that I could pull that would get me to flip back around. If there's any other um, sort of investigating I can kind of do about this room. Okay. Roll me an investigation check. Uh, that's only a twelve. You don't see any other books that look out of place or any other thing that might trigger the bookcase to roll go around again. Okay, then the only thing she's going to do is look at the creature and say, Um, hi. I don't mean you any harm. I'm just visiting and will leave as soon as I possibly can. And she's kind of looking around the room. The creature is unfazed by your entreaty and it, it lurches towards you. We cut back into the room and Javis, Sir Reichel Javis. And we've heard all this? Yes. You can hear, you can kind of hear what's going on on the other side of the wall. You, I'm well, just pointing hear, to the you bookshelf. Hear somewhat, you, you hear somewhat muffled talking, someone trying to plead with someone. Let's try and <laughs> destroy this bookcase, even though Cornelius doesn't want us to. Uh, can I attack it with my sword? Yeah. A 23. That hits. Uh, so you've done a lot of damage to this bookcase, but not enough uh, to let a person through, so it's kind of split there. Roll, roll perception checks, everyone, while this is happening. 22. Eight. Oof. Five. Okay, so it's going to be Bragnak. Bragnak, you hear something, almost a skittering sound, or something directly behind you. Whoa! I, I turn around. And you look around and you kind of say to yourself, hey, wait a second, uh, wasn't that chair at the table before? Wasn't that chair at the table before? I'm starting to think this whole place is haunted. I say to the others, ignore that ghost trap behind the bookcase. This thing's moving! And I, I approach the, uh, I don't know that you're real. I'm gonna, be, I'm gonna be real with you, stranger, who appeared in the middle of the night and said they've been here once before. <laughs> I don't know that you're real. Seems like a ghost to me. If we got zombies, we can have ghosts too. I'm going to the chair, which is definitely a real thing. And I'm going to, uh, uh, like, poke at the chair. Okay, you poke at it with? My weapon, yes. As soon as you poke it, teeth appear in the in the seat of this chair. It suddenly moves forward, its legs bend impossibly, and it latches onto your arm and it goes, ah, jump, and it chomps you. Oh, shit, Seven, 17. So the chair bites you and does five. And you're like, ah, worse, you can't seem to break free. Well, this chair is biting me. What's worse, I can't seem to break free. The lizard thing. Uh, lurches forward and it's going to attack Riley. It rolls a four. <laughs> so That's a uh, miss. This, this lizard has very poor depth perception. As I said, its eyes are askew. It looks like it's 
been the victim of some sort of experiment or something, and it goes to hit you, but it just swings over your head. It's like, arr, arr, arr. back up, back up to bubbles. And this thing just hurt Bragnock, right? Uh, yes. Hurt, it's, but, yes. It's, it's currently in the process of biting it. Yeah. Should I break it? Go, yes, it's biting me hand. Okay, going in. Give it, give Swing us an attack. In. Swing in. That is a twenty to hit. Okay, uh, that's gonna hit. Roll me some damage. Nine damage. Nine damage. Okay, you swing back and uh, lurch forward. Hit it with your great axe with all of your force, and kind of as you hit it, the wood turns to flesh and chunks fly off it and splatter on the wall. Uh, but you seem to have heard it. It goes ah! It kind of uh, lets it lets go of uh, of Bragnock there and screams. Um, but you see a long purple tongue snake out, a slithery tongue, as, as it kind of regards you. And now eyes pop open in this seat, just above a double set of teeth. This thing now has eyes and teeth, and uh, it is very upset. It is no longer grabbing him. Your axe is stuck in the top of the chair. No, 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 no. And I'm going to attempt to pull it out. Attempt to pull it out? Give me a strength check. That is a 12. Your axe is still stuck in this thing. Uh, its flesh is made of some sort of gooey material that seems to adhere to anything and is it's kind of formed around your axe and is pulling Ooh, on it. Don't so like it, okay. over here, your axe is in the chair. Uh, I'm gonna look at this creature and seeing that my kind words meant nothing to it, uh, I'm going to uh, reach my hand out and cast Inflict Wounds. Man, Riley's Ooh. scary. <laughs> This is like the only like amazing cleric spell. I love it. Uh, that's going to be a 21 to hit. That's going to hit. Uh, that's going to be nine. Ooh, 18, 19, 20, 21 points of damage. Holy goodness. All right, so this lizard creature, it's kind of malformed and stuff. So you uh, lay your hand upon it and this thing just melts. It falls apart. Uh, its arm falls off first, and then uh, as the as the inflicting wounds travel down towards its knee, its knee bends backwards and ends in on itself, and it just kind of melts into a puddle. You've killed this lizard person. <laughs> Instantly. Ooh, 22, 22 damage. She's, she's gonna go from a terrified look on her face to kind of putting her hands on the hip, her hips and looking down at this puddle and say, well, serves you right then. And then she'll kneel down and do a little prayer. <laughs> the puddle gurgles. That's, <laughs> that's, that's the only reaction. All right, excellent work. Over to Reichel Javis. Don't worry, I'm coming. I'll get you out. And then I will take another swing at the bookcase. Okay, you swing at the bookcase again. Uh, and this time, uh, yeah, give me a strength check. Uh, 11. Not great, but I'll say I'll say you've made enough room for one person to uh, to squeeze through there and uh, and make it to the other side. Can that person be me? Who squeezes yeah, you can, through? Yeah, you can go through. <laughs> yeah, you can go through. We'll re- and we'll then I squeeze through, and before I even see what's happening, like don't worry, I'm here to save you. You come upon uh, you, your eyes kind of take in what's happening in the dim lights. You notice basically a puddle, and uh, and Riley. I'm like, oh, okay. Took care of it yourself, all right. Yes. Well, good for you. Oh, thank you. Um, it was quite terrifying. I imagine. But thank you for, um, attempting to save me. Uh, I don't think I've ever been saved before. Okay, let's just tell Cornelius that this bookshelf broke itself or something. I, we'll think of a better story. Ragnar, uh, still fighting with the chair. Uh, what would you like to do? Can I use my war hammer? Mm-hmm to drive down the axe like a nail deeper into the flesh of this creature. I actually love that idea. I'm gonna give you advantage for that. Thank you. Okay. Uh, yeah, let's do a action war hammer. Woo! 18. 18? That's going to hit. Roll me some damage. 11. Whip out your war hammer and you bash the axe further into this chair and the thing howls. Black acre sprays out of it and it it kind of looks unstable now. It morphs, it turns into a table, back to a chair and then to a table. There's still teeth and eyes and a long purple tongue in this table, but it's uh, it's unstable now and it's kind of, uh, it's 
It's reacting erratically. It pulls you a little bit to the left and to the right as you're still holding on to that axe that sunk deep in its flesh. And it's very agitated now. Brag, um, back, it is brag, its nap, turn. Brag, and nap. it's going to, uh, now in table form, its final form. No, I don't know what its final form is. It, uh, it attempts once again to, uh, to bite you. <laughs> Seven. Okay. Uh, that, I assume that's not going to hit your armor class. No, I just, for some reason, I now imagine a table, but with wings. Yeah, it's, no, it has, it's, because you it's said that, it, yeah. it now, it now also has wings. One wing. One it's angel a, wing. Yeah, one, no, one, I get it. One yeah. wing <laughs> table. Yeah, I knew where you were going. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, so it attempts to bite you, but it's uh, it's clunky in its new form. It, it's almost as if it didn't even realize that it's shapeshift. It just kind of lurches forward and falls on its side. Teeth gnashing, ah, ah, but it's a table, so it can't quite get to you. Uh, and then we move uh, top of the order, Bubbles. Break that thing, Bubbles. So my great ax is still stuck in this thing as well. I'm gonna pull out my uh, two hand axes. Uh huh and go for it um and it's still it's still in table form so i'd like to go for two of its legs one two okay, okay and you've let go of your great axe right which is still yeah stuck. well it's stuck in there so yeah yeah so so you figured it's best to let go okay and you have two-handed fighting right so you get to make two attacks here i do mm -hmm. so that first one's a 22 to hit and the second one is a six to hit 22 is going to hit six is going to not hit okay so for that, so I go and I Bubbles pulls out her two hand axes and uh, says, "You will give me back my axe," and goes uh, for one leg and uh, hits the one leg for five damage. Mm -hmm. And then she's so angry that as she goes in with the second one, she kind of loses her balance a little bit and does like a hop, 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 and then quickly adjusts and hopes no one noticed that. <laughs> The creature is upset. It gets its leg ripped off uh, by one of these axes and it goes, Arr! you hear it screech as more black ichor sprays out of it. And it morphs again, this time into a chest. It's it's beat up now. It's spraying black, black stuff out of several uh, gashes in it that you guys have rendered. It's almost as if uh, every time it shapeshifts, the wound stays, uh, but it just takes on a different form. So it's spraying, and you guys are kind of covered in this viscous, black uh, stuff, ichor that's spraying out of it. Um, but it is still alive. Um, we go now to Riley. Riley's turn again. I'm going to move up to Bragnock. Bragnock. Place my hand upon his shoulder. Here, this is to help you destroy that thing. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm going to cast resistance on him. And so, if he needs to make a saving throw at any point, you get to add a d4. It's not like I even need your help, Baka. <laughs> <laughs> no. All right. What a jerk. Uh, Javis. But Sir thanks Michael anyway, Javis. I'm a really appreciative. <laughs> <laughs> Sir Michael Javis, slayer of bookcases. Uh, it's uh, Sir it's now up. Reichel. Uh, I, I guess, step out of the nook or, and... Yeah. Uh, step out of the remains of the bookcase. Yeah, and I'm going to see this <laughs> uh, thing, and it um, is grotesque to me. So I will swing at it and try and kill it with my sword. Okay. Is that your standard for murder? It is no. grotesque to me, so I will kill <laughs> it. Is Listen, I, nobody is a bigger fan of shapeless, faceless things than I am, but this is... There's something about it. I'm not going to use my second of three sense of evils, but I sense that it's evil, so I am going to try and make it no more. Mm -hmm. So I will swing my sword. Uh, all in, that's an eight. You swing your sword, but unfortunately, its tongue flashes out lightning quick and wraps around your sword. Your sword is now stuck to this thing's tongue. You can kind of pull and yank, but it's in there good. And it's got your sword in its tongue and it doesn't look like it's doing any damage or even cutting it. It's just kind of oozing and forming around it. So it now has your sword and it uh, doesn't look like you hurt it very much. Back to Greg now. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna try to mash the tongue with my hammer. To, to free his weapon. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. 18. That's going to hit. Okay, so you, you Rear back with your mighty warhammer, you slam down, and you hit it so hard, but the tongue kind of 
absorbs the the impact and kind of goes all the way down to the ground. It stretches like Laffy Taffy, or whatever the medieval equivalent of Laffy Taffy is. I guess Just taffy, laughter taffy, or whatever. And it, salt water it, taffy. So you pound it into the ground. It gets pounded flat. There's a like kind of like a tongue pancake on the ground now, and the creature screams ah and releases Reichel Javis' sword. Uh, thank you, Bragnock. My pleasure. We are back to the mimic, and the mimic does not like that you did that at all. So uh, it it kind of turns to you. Its tongue still kind of off over there where you got it, and it uh, tries to bite you in the head. With a 19. And it's a chest now, remember? Oh, so my poor it, head. it jumps up and it bites you in the head. And uh, it does. Losing all of her family. Four plus three, seven damage. So the thing chops down hard on your head. And you're stuck there. You're going to, um, because it's got your head and you're kind of in its mouth, any future attack rolls for you are going to be at disadvantage. What? It's got me head. I'm at a disadvantage here. <laughs> Again. Uh, back, top of the turn, Bubbles. Yeah, not good. Um, I mean, I I still have my two hand axes, so I'm going to go back in with my two hand axes for sure. I'm sorry, you hit with one of those. One of those became stuck. Oh, did one of them become Any stuck? Any weapon you hit with, yeah, will become stuck. So you're down to one hand axe. What or are the weapons on the rack? It's a short sword, a lance, which I will allow you to throw, a shield, and that's it. Um. Okay, yeah, I'll take the lance then. Okay. Are you throwing it, or are you trying to run forward and stab it? Um, I am trying to run forward and stab it. Okay. You run forward and stab So it. that's oh, a 19 to hit. Oh, that's going to hit. Roll me some damage. Uh, so that's eight damage. And describe to me uh, this mimic's end. Oh, man. Okay, so yeah, I'm running in with it, and um, I'm trying it. Does it have eyeballs in this form? Yes. I'm trying to get it right in between the eyeballs with this lance okay. as I'm running. Right, yeah, yeah. You, you so can, I run, it pierces directly through the eyeballs, and as this black goo is like flying out of it, Bubbles don't care. Bubbles is running in, just big scream, ah, as black stuff is spraying all over her face, um, and completely like pins it to the wall behind it. Okay, yeah, I love that. Uh, so it gurgles its last gurgle, it's now pinned to the wall. It, it kind of sags, the whole creature. It doesn't look like wood anymore, really. It just looks like a sagging pile of flesh with a grotesque purple tongue. Uh, still, part of the purple tongue is still stuck to the floor where Bragnock hammered it in. And it's kind of just this oozing mess of flesh. And uh, and yeah, it, it moves no more. Bubbles grabs her weapons and says, I'll be yeah. taking that back. Yeah, it seems to have lost its adhering power too. You can... Now pick up any weapons that were stuck in its flesh. I'm starting to think our uncle was up to no good. I I mean, yeah, I I, I, I guess. I, I Either that or he just really, really wanted to test us, you know, to make sure we had the metal. But I don't know about these guys. Did you not see what I did to that bookcase? <laughs> Come on. Bragnock, you seem injured. Might I tend to those wounds? I mean, sure, all right, I can do it too, but like, if you want to try. Oh, sure. Um, and then you'll kind of see her like focus for a second. And uh, unlike her, her energy that has shot out from before, um, this one's like a soft pink and it kind of flows very, um, very beautifully over to him uh, as she channels uh, divinity to preserve life. Uh, and you will restore uh, 10 hit points. Oh, thank you kindly. Oh, you're nice. welcome. You fought bravely. Uh, yeah, I, I, I see that you gave me ten, and because I think that's, you know, that's very sweet of you, but also I'm who I am. I, uh, I'm like, well, I mean, it's all right, but I think I can do better, and I want to, uh, totally waste a spell and, <laughs> uh, do, um... Cure wounds on myself. I heal for seven, but I uh, I look around and I say, "Oh, looks like I did exactly eleven. Oh boy! Oh, that's Shit. wonderful. I hope that makes you full health. Oh, it does more than full. I feel revigorated thanks to my abilities, and you know, you help too. You know, we're so lucky to have you." No, you are lucky to have me, that's all. I agree. Perhaps you could use that ability to see if anyone else might need assistance. 
No, everyone looks fine to me. <laughs> um, uh, I would like to pr- make a perception check around the room to see how everyone is uh, holding up. So. Okay. so while this is happening, Bubbles, not to be left out, starts doing some kind of weird, like, patty cake thing on herself and mm-hmm. uh, uses second wind to heal herself for 10 hit points. Nice. That is an ability you have. Reckle Javis, who has sustained no damage, <laughs> just looks into the reflective side of his sword and smiles at himself. <laughs> Still got it. Wow. Wow. All right. So you have defeated the mimic. You have three doors in this room, one leading to outside. That leads out to the stables. Opposite that lies a door that you know leads to Jebediah's bedchamber. And then obviously the door back to the great room by the main entrance. There is that corridor that was behind the bookcase. You guys have now completely removed the bookcase and can see that there is a, a staircase leading down somewhere back there. Riley's going to go over to that cabinet that we didn't look in and look in it. Roll me an investigation check. 16. At one end of the cabinet, there's a piece of wood sticking out. It looks very strange. You pop it, and because you press that switch, a little box pops out, and in the box is a small copper key. Uh, I'm going to then uh, have discreetly done all mm-hmm. this. Okay, no one in the room notices you doing this. I'm going to grab the key mm-hmm. and just tuck it in my belt. Okay, uh, does anyone else want to do anything? Riley, our honest, good-natured friend. Did you find anything yes. in that bookcase? Oh, indeed, I did. Um, it was very interesting. Um, there seemed to be some sort of secret compartment. Was there anything in the secret compartment? Oh, yes, this key. <laughs> oh. She pulls the key out. <laughs> So honest. Wonderful. <laughs> Okay. Yes. I figured I'd hang on to it um, until the end of this um, this searching for these items, um, and I shall award it to um, the person I believe who has acted the most um, brave, loyal, and true. Technically, it will be a quarter all of our keys, so uh-huh. um, I'm not sure that they, Oh, you... it doesn't even belong to me. Right, but it will belong to all of us. Well, sure. But it's a nice sentiment. Yes, I'm just hanging on to it for safekeeping. Hey, uh, Bragnac, do you remember there being a downstairs to Uncle Jebediah's place before? Look, I don't remember there being a, a table that tries to eat you, or zombies, or a chest you can't smash open. Uh, there's a lot I don't remember. It sounds like he kind of got weird with it in his later years. No judging, you know. No, I mean, admittedly, I didn't visit him all that often. I tried to? Right, well, no one would blame me. He was a strange fellow. He always gave me bad dating advice, so I didn't come by very often. As you're talking, Cornelius enters the room, and he looks around, and he says, Oh, dear. More cleaning. But he's holding in his hand a tray. Uh, some refreshments for for you whippersnappers, if you'd like. Uh, this, should, this should pick up your spirits. It's my own special blend. Thank you. Yes, I am quite parched. And she'll drink it. Okay, do you all drink? No. Yeah. Bubbles would like to sit down and start making another brew. (laughs) Okay. The only people that drink are Riley and Javis. Are you drinking? Oh, yeah. You're each healed for two. You you feel an invigorating aura come over you, almost as if you've had a a nice long night's sleep and your spell slots are recharged. Ooh. Mm. Is there ginger in that? Cornelius? There is, there is. Ginger is part of my special blend. What? Ginger Wonderful. and turmeric. It's delightful. Do I? It's too, <laughs> it's too bad you turned. Cannibals? It's good for the. Uh, it's good for your gut, for your uh, microbiome. Ah, bubbles. I don't do know I about see... these. Do I see? Delicious. Do I see my other party members get some type of healing property from the tea? Yeah, they they glow slightly. Then I'm gonna take some of the tea and add it to the brew. Okay. Just a little bit. Okay. I do recommend you try this tea. Not only is it delicious, but he was correct. It is very invigorating. Mm Mm-hmm. Tea's not my style. And Cornelius, having served the tea, wanders away. Leads you back to your own devices. Well, should we perhaps continue on? Um, do you know if we should go down these stairs? Or there was another room out the common room in the front. I'll tell you, I don't know what we should do, but I'll tell you what... Reichel Javis wants to do, which is to go downstairs and get into some business. I'm sorry, what do you want to do? You know, go downstairs and poke around. You don't, you don't hear that siren song to adventure? I hear it just 
over there by the stairs. As you put your hand to your ear, uh, you do hear something. You hear a crash from outside towards the stables, and uh, you hear a skittering noise outside, and then on the wall, and then the ceiling. Uh, outside, on the I'm sorry, on the roof. Like something skittered across the roof. Well, hopefully it won't go through the hole. <laughs> that would be oh, the massive rough. hole? <laughs> if it just came through that hole, that'd be awful. Did you hear that sound? Do you think perhaps it could be more undead? Perhaps, but we're inside. We don't have to worry about it. And outside is terrible stuff. What if we go downstairs? Yes, I do think that's a good idea. Perhaps you could lead the way. Oh, right, right, right. Uh, Javis, was it? The doctor yes. here says you should lead the way. Oh, just a physician's assistant. <laughs> Gladly. Shall we? All right. Yeah, no, I'll follow you. All right, so Jay- Yeah, Bubbles no. stands up and pours um, a drinking horn of either of her new brew and hands some to, uh, to Bragnack and says, I call it table chair. Chair. Table chair ale. Oh, table chair ale. That's a good name. All right. Oh, we just made the just the two. It's, okay, that's good. Well, fun. you guys, you had tea. I drink many things. Oh, I can taste the gingers in it. Yes, this particular brew is made with an invigorating tea from Cornelius. Each of you heal two damage and restore any spell slots. Is there a, a light or anything in the staircase or is it like darkness? There's one candle. Then I'm going to pull out my torch. Riley sees him pull out his torch. Uh, and she says, oh, no, 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 um, that's not necessary. Okay, go on. <laughs> um, what weapon are you yielding? A sword? Yeah. And she's going to just kind of wave her hand a little bit, and his sword will uh, ignite with not flame, but light. Uh, and I have cast light upon his sword. I'm going to be honest, even though you worship a heathen god, this is a pretty cool thing. Oh, oh. <laughs> well, thank you. So you get some points, but you are still living in sin. <laughs> All right, downstairs. <laughs> so Javis leads the way. Yes, you travel down the stairs in the darkened corridor and you find yourself in the cellar, Jebediah Tulax's brewing cellar. You see some things that are familiar from your previous trips here, Bragnak and Bubbles. The barrels of brew are familiar. There's a couple new things too. There's two suits of what looked like some sort of uh, ancient armor on either side of a, a barrel that's been set on a pedestal, it's got a tap in it and there's a placard on it. You can't quite read the placard from here. There's a, a second staircase. Kind of in front of that second staircase is a coffin or some kind of sarcophagus. It looks like a coffin except it's uh, carved out of stone. And on the stone carved into the top of it is a dwarf that greatly resembles your uncle, uh, Jebediah Tulex. And this is where you are now. Uh, I'm gonna just go ahead and do a little divine sensing. See if I can suss out any, uh, good or evil, any celestials or fiends or No celestials, anything. no fiends, no one dead in the room. Can I do detect magic? Yes, that armor on either side of the barrel seems to have some sort of, uh, magic or something attached to it. You feel a, a slight aura. Bubbles is gonna go over to the sarcophagus mm -hmm. and, um, oh... Uncle Jebediah, and try to use, um, I, I want to make like a stone cunning check. I have stone cunning. Okay. So if I make a history check, uh, trying to figure out the origins of the stonework, I get a bonus to that. Sure. So I'm trying to figure out who maybe carved this sarcophagus top of Uncle Jebediah. Excellent. Yeah, you can totally do that. You do recognize, uh, that this is Jebediah's own, uh, work carving, uh, this image of himself into the coffin. Uncle Jebediah made this himself. Mm -hmm. I don't know what good that does us, but you know, trying to find things, I guess. We've been together for quite some hours and I feel like I hardly know the three of you. Um, how did you first um, get into your lines of work? Uh, I'm, I'm with the local militia. Yeah, I like to drink, so, you know. But you also smash things quite well. I mean, not as well as others. I'm a cleric, after all. Oh, I would never have guessed well, that. Well, I'm not very good at it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, perhaps it's all the drinking. No, that couldn't be it. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Javis? Me? I'm just a sucker for helping people 
and myself. And here I am, just spreading joy and saving people and kind of being the best person that, that ever lived. That does sound very heroic. It is. Well, I'm glad we can all learn a little bit about one another. Oh, hold on, what about you? Oh, well, I'm a physician's assistant, not a doctor. And I've already mentioned that, you know, I practice under Dr. Phineas, um, one of the most powerful and and known um, doctors um, just up there on the hill. Um, additionally, my parents were great adventurers who fell to unfortunate circumstances when they were bit one day by a swarm of rats. Now, if only their party had a healer, perhaps they wouldn't have died from their wounds, but they did. And ever since I was little, I swore an oath that I shall be that person to help save the adventurers if they are to fall to a swarm of rats hold on, then. or any well, other hold on. creatures. What are your parents' norms? Some sort of half... Were they no Some sort of halfling? No. Well, how could they die to rats? No, I'm not quite sure. That's just what Would I they know. they wear rats? Um, again, Some sort I, of I don't giant know. mutant rat? Perhaps. Were they ugly? All I know is that Your they parents? were bitten by rats by a swarm of them. And unfortunately, they fell to those very, very unfortunate circumstances. I'm going to let I'm going to let Javis say that. Uh, go on. Oh, just in the middle of questioning, he was like, "Were they ugly? Your parents?" Oh, no. Um, the portraits that I grew up with seeing, um, they were quite, um, well-looking adventurous. Okay, thank you. That, now it makes it sadder. I like to visualize stories, so now it's sadder that they were hot. <laughs> oh, sorry for your loss. Oh, it's okay, because their loss gained me my life's purpose. Ooh, sounds like you've got a lot to work out then. Only to become a better and better phys- physician's assistant, oh. and perhaps one day be a wonderful doctor. Oh, yeah, of course. It's uh, just this won't end terribly for you at all. So I'll be over here, and I'm just going to, like, <laughs> move away. <laughs> yup, I'll go check these barrels here. As you're checking, you hear a skittering somewhere above you in the in the manor and crashing. Skitter, 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 like something's <laughs> up there knocking stuff over. <laughs> Cornelius, hmm? I'll just I wanted to do just a once a once over. Okay, so as you're looking, I said you couldn't see it from here, but since you're investigating, you check this barrel over here, and it says Jebediah Tulax IPA on the placard with the barrel. In addition to that, uh, you see on the table there are. Uh, four steins. That's it. Oh, you guys, I have found the IPA. That was quite easy. It was just sitting here all along. Okay. Well, we don't have to, like, bring it anywhere or do anything with it. We just uh, have to have found it, we right? We have to cheers. We have to cheers in his name. Okay. So Bubbles is going to take out uh, four drinking horns. Oh, but there, there are actually chalices here on the table. Okay. Perhaps that's what he wanted us to drink from, though I don't partake in the um, alcoholic types. Well, there's a first time parts. for everything, ain't there? Oh no, I will cheers, but I will not drink. It's very rude to not drink after you toast, so. Then I shall drink my water. If your parents had known while they were dying from the rats that you would be so rude, they would die <laughs> all over again from shame. That is okay. I, I don't. I don't back that up. I don't. Back and they that would up. thrice die, knowing that you worship a false god. <laughs> Jesus. But the sword is cool. <laughs> he's just kind of like Star Wars, kidding it. Things have not been as they have seemed a lot, and I'm just wondering. His coffin is here. We were told he died of natural causes, but dwarves are hardy people. Are you not? It seems weird that he would just catch ill. Could we just crack open this coffin and just take a little peeksy? Oh no, that would be an abomination. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know dwarf culture. Maybe it's not. No, it's not dwarf culture. It's cleric culture. And I'm sure that Bragnock will understand that as well. I don't think I learned that chapter. Is that like more advanced work? Oh, it's the most fundamental rule of being a cleric. You do not unearth 
a spirit that is peacefully resting. Right. You could disturb their their transition to the beyond. They could be trapped here for forever, or perhaps request request a task from us, um, which would then be an abomination, and we must smite them from this world. Um, right, but what you're trying to tell me is that all the tomb raiding I do with my comrades and all the dungeon <gasps> crawling and this warhammer I got and uh, this uh, crossbow that I found, all of it belongs to dead people. You're trying to tell me that when I went into the tomb of the undead king, that I shouldn't have done that. Oh, no. I fear your titles might be stripped from you. Riley, please, you're causing him undue cognitive dissonance. Bragnock, you're recycling those weapons. What good are they doing in those tombs? If anything, they're just weapons for undead beasties. You're a hero. No, you could have disturbed the spirits lying there. Right, but like, what are they going to do? Come back and haunt us? Yes, exactly. And then you'd have to smite them from this world because it is an, an unholy abomination. Right, but I like the smiting part, so maybe we could get, you know, a little smiting on. Man, Riley, your god is a drag. I'm telling you, on my side, we, it's a lot more a lot more fun. A little more give and take with the morals. I'll tell you what feels like an unholy abomination, not having this IPA right now. Oh, that's it right there. <laughs> Let's do it. I mean, I'll, I'll pour. I'll pour. I mean, I'm going to do it because I'm a cool guy. Let's just get that out right, there. No but pressure. I get it. We, I just think we could have looked in and just seen if he was even dead. Well, look, here's the deal. You look in, you report back to us. We'll stand way over here in case a ghost eats your soul, and everything will be fine. Oh, no. I cannot let you do that. Are you sure? I do not want to inflict wounds upon you, but I will if I'm forced to. You're going to stop me from making sure that this weird thing is up to snuff? Even though there's been, like, bookcases that transform and seats and that turn into tables, all this stuff. Zombies that rip off bear paws and somehow use them as weapons. You're gonna, you think that me trying to investigate this is... You might investigate the coffin and unless it is broken open or, or perhaps the lid tilted off, you should not go ahead and do it yourself. You're right. You could be You're causing right. more harm. That's fair. I'm gonna do exactly what you just said. So Reichel Javis is gonna walk over to the coffin and try and accidentally no. <laughs> shove the whole thing off. Okay, uh, yeah, uh, it's not on there, it's not sealed, it's not on there very tight. You shove uh, the lid of the coffin aside and you peer into the coffin. Oh no, what did I do? And you see nothing, it's empty. Huh. <gasps> Was your uncle invisible? No. Not that I remember. And this coffin is empty. It's empty? Oh no, I fear the worst. Uh, and what's that? Well, you should know, or did you not read any of the books you were given in school? Uh, no, not a one. Abomination. Well, I fear the worst is upon us. For either someone has moved his body, or perhaps it's moved itself which means his soul is not at rest and cannot move on, and therefore we must find where this undead version of your uncle is, I'm sorry, and we must smite it from this world. Oh, we just like let him be undead and live his life on life. <laughs> and then we drink from these chalices. <laughs> the four of us drink. Follow me here. We drink yep, from we the chalice. We stay mm -hmm. here the rest of the night. Tomorrow morning, that old sold upstairs gives us each a fourth of the property. We go into town and we sell it to some noble lord or whoever, and then it's their problem. And we've got plenty of drinking money. And you have enough money for, to forget that your parents were killed by rats. Well, I don't need to forget that. Um, might I ask where you learned your ways of being a cleric? Oh... At my local temple. And which temple is that? Oh, it's the handmaiden's cow. It's a pub. 
Admi- oh, so you're not really a cleric then. You're just um, pretending to be one. No, I'm a cleric of the Handmaiden's Cow. But how did you become a cleric? Because I don't think anyone in their right mind would bestow the honorable title of cleric to you um, if you don't want to smite the undead from this oh, world. I want to smite them for sure, but like, for fun? No, it is not for fun. It's to save their souls. Well, it sounds like you're uh, doing it wrong, a... not me. Can I ask a question? Yes. Okay. If Uncle Jebediah is not in there, how do we know he's undead? What if he's alive? Oh, then you'll be smiting a live person, wouldn't you, cleric? No, I would never just kill someone without any sort of um, hostility you acted upon us. You were just talking us. about how you were like, oh, I gotta go smite your uncle. No, I said smite the undead. This is a wonderful impression, right now. Thank you, I'm very good at impressions. Oh, I gotta go Either smite way, your uncle. I- Either way, I think we should go find him regardless and continue on this ridiculous task of getting a bunch of loot that I don't even care for. Wait, so why are you doing this then if it's not for loot? Well, now it's to find where the body of your uncle is and be sure that he is properly buried and so his soul can move on to the next stage. Unless he's alive, in which case you're going to try and kill him. No, unless he's alive, which we would all rejoice No, because then I wouldn't be getting my share of the house. Oh, I would rejoice. I would not screw him. From above, you can hear kind of echoing down the second winding stone staircase. You can hear skittering and a, like a screeching rattling noise. <laughs> noise emanating from that cavern or whatever's above there. And you hear more thrashing and things breaking. Perhaps we should cheers quickly and, and go investigate what made that crashing sound. Yes, the blues yep. first. It will help the second. Yeah, as they're saying that, I'm just going to go over and start pouring the IPA into the chalices. Excellent. Excellent. That is great. I love that you did that. So as you bring one of the chalices and you twist the knob to begin the IPA flowing, the two suits of armor on either side lurch to life and they turn their heads, their metal heads towards you and they raise their axes. Roll for initiative, please. All right, 13 initiative for me. 13 for bubbles. 17. Five. Riley, you notice these suits shambling towards bubbles. They're raising their axes. What would you like to do? I would like to back away uh, pretty far from them. And I'm going to use a ranged spell, uh, and I have 120 feet of range, uh, called Guiding Bolt. Mm -hmm. And uh, I will target the one closest to bubbles. Okay. Um, that's going to be a 21 to hit. Uh, yeah, that'll that'll do it. Uh, roll me some damage. Uh, that's going to be 11, 12 points of damage. Oh my goodness, really? Yeah. And um, whoever goes after me will get advantage on their roll Whoa. to attack this uh, thing. Okay, and it's the one on the right side. I don't right have any right. weapons. The one to Kills everything. Bubbles. It connects. This one kind of looks um, where you've seen like pretty soft pink magic from Riley and you've seen this bright burst of light from mm-hmm. Riley. Um, this one is a little bit darker of like a, a purpley black mm-hmm. color and it kind of just shoots out. But it looks, at, when it first comes from her hands, it looks like a, a nice warm, soft light. But then once it strikes, um, the armor, you could see it kind of turns this like purpley black before, um, you know, obviously going inside of them. Okay, right, right. So it turns uh, purpley black on contact with the armor and uh, the armor kind of takes on that color and the color spreads a little bit and then chunks of the armor kind of shoot out and you can see inside there's no person. It's just like a black void. The, the armor also, it doesn't stagger back. It doesn't seem very phased by what you've done at all. So that's what's going on there. Bubbles, you're up next. This armor's coming towards you. Um, I mean, does it look like it's angry? It, there, it has no expression. It's just a helmet. And you're up close enough to see through the slats in the helmet, uh, more of kind of what you see from the hole in the armor, just a black void inside. Cheers to Uncle Jebediah's wonderful IPA. And I'm gonna take my great ax and try to like clank with their axes Mm -hmm. in solidarity. You clank axes, it takes another step towards you, and it it looks like it's aiming at you. Oh no. Mm -hmm. 
Um, okay. Hey, I'm just trying to share with you. Chill. And I'm gonna uh, take my take my great axe and um, try to just use like instead of slicing, bash them in the in the head like a little like friendly knockback. Okay. Like, don't do that to me. You're trying to hit and knock them back. They are kind of up against a wall almost, so you can't knock them back very far. But yeah, maybe like one space. Okay, go ahead. And- yeah, I'm just trying. I'm I'm trying to like. Just bash him in the face a little, like a little friendly reminder that like we're its people. Okay, go ahead. Uh, so that's a twenty-three to hit. It is not a nat twenty. Okay, okay, yeah, that will hit. Uh, roll me some damage. That's ten damage. Okay, that's pretty solid whack very in the face. Nice. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he raised he raised a weapon at me. Not cool. Yeah. Ten damage. <laughs> uh, that's great. You're just trying to drink. Yeah. Not cool, bro. We're all just trying to drink. Yeah. Okay, and as you say that, he does uh, stagger back a little bit. He staggers back against the wall, kind of bounces off the wall, uh, but then uh, moves forward once again, coming back at you. Uh, And in fact, uh, it is now the armor's turn, and the armor is going to attack you. It raises that ax, but it rolls a five. It's a very big ax coming towards you, but not very fast. And so as the ax comes down, you kind of dodge to the side a little bit, and uh, the ax misses. You may now uh, taunt the armor that has just missed you if you'd like. Uh, Bubbles just st- sidesteps and looks at the armor and says, nope. The second armor, since, uh, yeah, you're the only one kind of, you're the closest one in range. This second armor staggers over to you and it's gonna take a swing with its ax. And it rolls an eight plus four. So that's gonna be a 12. Does it hit? Uh, no. Okay. It has multi-attack. The armor makes two melee attacks. So it's gonna swing again. What a jerk. 15 plus no. oh. four, 19, does that hit? Oh, well that hits, yes. Yes, nice. D6, one damage. Plus two One damage. three. Yeah, so yeah, it goes to swing at you. Uh, you put your ax up to block. It's very strong though, so even though you're blocking, the ax still makes contact with you and you can feel it crunch down into your armor on your shoulder. Excellent. Uh, next we move to Sir Reichel Javis over by the coffin that he very accidentally knocked open. Uh, did she pour the drinks? There's one mug poured. Uh, that's all she had time to pour before this armor came to life. You might be onto something if we do actually like drank and toasted, maybe they like deactivate or something, but that would require a series of turns mm-hmm. to make that happen, right? Yeah, you'd have to gather up, pour, and, uh, and toast while being attacked. Uh, then I'm gonna make a, uh, I'll pull out my sword and I'm gonna go for the armor that Bubbles already hit. Okay, make an attack for me. Um, 11. 11 does not hit its armor, no. Nope. Uh, so you, uh, take, you take a swing and your sword clangs off the mighty armor. It's just polished steel and it repels your attack. Javis, if you're looking for an alternate method other than straight up attacking, you do have an open coffin here. These things do not look very maneuverable. If you, if you somehow knocked it into that coffin, it would probably probably have a lot of trouble getting out. By God, it speaks to me. It's telling me that maybe we should try and get the armor in the coffin. <laughs> yes, Riley's does suck. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Um... So the one that is up against the wall is significantly damaged. Would I be able to tell how damaged that is? How damaged? Uh, it's <coughs> missing a big chunk, and then it's also been clanged in the head, uh, so its armor is dented inward. And so, yeah, it looks like it's uh, it's not doing great. Bragnock sort of chants, says a few words into his into his stein that he has, or I guess this mm-hmm. would be a horn. Okay. Um, and then uh, holds out his hand, and I will fire a guiding bolt at the one against the wall. Great, and is that a roll or is that a cantrip? So I roll a ranged weapon attack, but then I do like uh, uh, radiant damage. Okay, Uh, great, so roll your attack. 21. Nice, Uh, that's gonna hit, so roll some damage for me. It's 4d6, I rolled 20 damage. Okay, uh, describe to me how this uh, guiding bolt <laughs> obliterates this armor suit. Yeah, he like, uh, he, he, 
he uh, talks into his horn and he says a few things uh, to himself and then he holds out his hand and he takes a giant swig and then he just like pushes forward and from his hand a bolt of radiant light shoots up into the sort of open void chest area and begins to shine vibrantly and from inside the armor light sort of seeps through and like out the eye he's like oh shit and the armor sort of like just crumbles over okay <laughs> you you yelled so loud that discord cut out <laughs> so he was like oh, oh shit <laughs> yeah yeah and he's like okay. yeah and you know it's one of those like cool movie moments where like the light shining through his like yeah, the yeah. eyes and stuff right right like, oh. yeah and like little through. bit little bits Beauty of armor flying everywhere yeah yeah Riley sees that he did the same thing she did, um, and will look over at him and say, Oh, great minds, think alike. Yeah, uh, Bragnac takes another swig. Hmm. Almost as if the DM didn't realize how powerful Bragnac is, he obliterates this character with 66 worth of damage. Uh, yeah, so that guy's gone. The skittering noise uh, that you refuse to investigate <laughs> grows louder and louder. Oh, that! There's yeah. a hissing, rattling noise coming down uh, that second staircase, um, and uh, is it a pack of rats? What's I know. Please let it be. A what rat. is the over under? <laughs> that on would a pack be great. Rats? If if I had if I had uh, something to represent rats, <laughs> I would totally change my game plan right now. But I don't. Let me just tell you that would be the most amazing story in the world. If at the end, it was like, it's me, the rat who killed your parents. I'd be like, oh. <laughs> Perhaps on a future adventure. I've trained my whole life for this. Uh, and uh, crawling down the staircase, actually on the ceiling, uh, is a giant oh. spider. Ew. A giant spider comes charging out of there and looks around and goes, <sighs> and it's closest to Bubbles there. Terrifying. At the turn towards, uh, yeah, painted it myself. <laughs> and it shoots a, a web. A viscous webbing right at uh, Bubbles. Five to hit. And that's a seven plus five is 12. Does the attack hit Bubbles? With a 12? No. Okay. It sprays uh, this sticky webbing at you, but you hold up your axe and the, the web kind of splits as it hit, hits your axe and goes around you. And it does not, uh, it does not actually envelop, envelop you. Uh, okay, Riley just saw this spider come out of nowhere. Well, it came and, down a corridor. Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, she was too busy focused uh, on the guiding mm. bolt um, that, you know, mm. was very, very much copied from her guiding bolt she did. Uh, and she will actually <laughs> cast another guiding bolt, uh, but at this spider. Okay, shooting at the spider now. That's going to be a 17 to hit. 17 to hit the spider's... Armored carapace. That is going to hit. Roll me some damage. Okay. Oh my gosh, wow. I rolled three ones and a four. So seven points of damage. That sucks. Okay, seven points of damage. That's not bad. Oh no. That's not bad. Ones. Seven points uh, of something. Uh, so That's 4d6 and I rolled seven. Uh -huh. So it does hit. Uh, describe to me how the spider reacts to this hit from this bolt. Um, the same way it's... that it uh, reacted to the armor earlier, um, it first comes from her hand as this warm light, and once it impacts this creature, uh, it's gonna look more purpley and black, kind of spread a little bit before fading away. And it was on the ceiling, if you remember, and it goes, <laughs> and it flips over and drops to the ground. You've knocked it off the ceiling. It is now on ground level with the rest of you. It will now be Bubbles' turn. Bubbles, you got a, an armor to your left and a spider to your right. Neither of them are harmed yet, or the, the armor's harmed a little bit? No, that armor was not attacked yet. Uh, the spider has been harmed, yes, by that bolt. All right, what the heck? Uh, I'm gonna go for the spider. Okay. Uh, great axe attack, so just going for it. Okay. That is a 22 to hit. Ooh, that's gonna hit. And that is 11 damage. Wow, uh, yeah. Uh, so you you wounded this spider uh, quite a bit. Bubbles looks back and forth between the armor and the spider and uh, says, I don't like the way you're looking at me. 
and uh, points to the spider and then goes into the spider with the great axe and um, picks it up and tries to go like right for the eyeballs Mm -hmm. section. Again, going right there for the middle and um, says, I'm not afraid of you. Yep. But also you all get the idea she might be slightly afraid of spiders. (laughs) Right, but no one's judging. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. So yeah. as you say, I'm not afraid of you. Your voice shakes just a little bit. Uh, just a little but bit. But you still manage to swing that axe down with uh, tremendous force, and you actually squish uh, four of its eight eyeballs in one fell swoop. So its eyeballs split open, and are, are now Ooh. parts of the eyeballs are hanging, and the spider goes, <laughs> and it's very upset. Also, please don't be Uncle Jebediah. <laughs> Transformed into a spider? You never know. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, if he did, this is the fate he deserves. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was Bubbles. Uh, the remaining armor, it now lurches towards Bragnock. And it's oh. it's going to attack. And it hits with a 18 plus 4 to hit, so I assume that hits. Yeah. Okay. And we'll roll some damage. It's... 1d6 plus 2. Another one! Wow! I'm awesome. So three damage (laughs) as it clanks down into your heavy armor. Uh, The armor crushes inward. You can feel the blow hit your your man boob, your uh, whatever this is. What's it called? Your your breast? Yep. Pectoral. Pectoral. That's the word I was looking for. I went with man boob. (laughs) Nipple! Oh! I like man boob. So sensitive there. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it's gonna swing again. It has multi attack. Oh, not the other nip. Oh. That's another 18. Wow, I never rolled this good. But my damage rolls have been bad. Six uh, plus two. Uh, so eight damage. So now it really rears back. It feels like it's got a beat on you now. It's really getting to its rhythm. And it comes in and it chops, uh, this time hitting right above your hip. Oh, that's how I walk. Oh, my <laughs> hip. Uh, how many hit points are you at these days? I'm at 10. Okay. Oh, no. Okay. Great. Uh, so that was the two armors. Reichel Javis, you are up. Uh, enraged by the audacity of this armor, he's going to yell, Hey, no one touches my friend's nips but me. And he's going to run over and cast Lay on Hands. Mm -hmm. And he's going to, from behind, grab him, caressing his bosom and juicing him with five health points back. (laughs) Oh, nice. So you're healing healing your friend. (laughs) Nice. That is the the sexiest Lay on Hands I think I've ever seen. Oh, so comfortable. The armor appears. You hold me. (laughs) The armor appears. The armor appears slightly turned on. You can see its codpiece <laughs> bulging just a little bit. Um, it's definitely, it's definitely feeling something. Thought that was thought that was metal. Doesn't seem to make a lot of sense, but <laughs> what, all right. What, whatever it is that's in there is is uh, enough to swell the metal outwards. <laughs> oh, that that void, the void of darkness inside. I get it. Yeah. All yeah. Right. Uh, okay, so that was Reichel Javis's turn. Good work healing your friend. Uh, and now we're over to Bragnock. All right, Brynock is going to see his friends engaged in combat and doing their thing, and he is going to cast Bless on the three of them on all their attack rolls from now until I lose concentration. Uh, you get plus D4 um, to any attacker saving throw from now until the end. The spider, having missed with his webbing, is now, and uh, it can't see very well, but it's still got four eyes, and it can see uh, right in front of you that uh, Bubbles has just hit it in the face with an axe. It's not It's not happy about that. It's not happy at all. Damn it. Six plus, uh, oh, God. Six plus five, 11. I'm assuming that doesn't hit. Nope. Uh, okay. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, with the, all this uh, eye fluid leaking out, it goes to bite you and just completely misses. It's, uh, its fangs whiff and hit air. It moves its head as if trying to get a better view of you. Um, and Bubble says, that's nasty. Yeah, Over, that was the spider. Over to Riley. Riley's gonna march right up to the suit of armor mm-hmm. and say, no, 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 that is enough of you. And put her hand right mm-hmm. on it, on its chest and cast uh, Inflict Wounds. Okay. <gasps> Nat 
20! That's my first oh, one of the God. game! Oh, God. 20. Here's oh, my gosh. Print. Okay. Oh, finally. I was like, God, I usually roll more nat 20s than none. Um, all right. So I'm also adding the D4 yep. and doubling it. Okay. That is going to be, oh, my gosh. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 44 points of damage. <laughs> And that fool! <laughs> and him! Fantastic! And that stupid suit of armor! <laughs> Alright. Uh, it wait, can I can I Yeah, just, go for it. Yeah, you know. get, tell me so Yeah, that that So ex here's how it happens. So Riley's determination just like this this just shoots out at this thing. And it and its metal just gets so hot and just sprays everywhere that it catches the spider and also kills the spider. Right? No! <laughs> no! No, I think that, that You can't do that. <laughs> okay, would, if you want yeah, if you want to go that, it turns into like kind of a shrapnel grenade and shards <laughs> of it do shoot out. And actually, yeah, all of you roll a uh, oh, uh, no. dexterity roll to see if you could dodge the shrapnel. Remember, uh, dexterity saving throws, the three of you, not me, but the three of you have a plus four to that. Oh, well, actually, you have a plus That's D4. True. Oh, D4. Yes. Uh, okay. Good luck, everyone. I got a seven, so I'm effed up, but y'all should be good. 21. <laughs> so that is a total of 22. Okay. So, Reichel Javis, what did you roll? A five. Oh, so you... <laughs> oh, no. All right. And then I got to roll for the spider. <laughs> Ah, the spider rolls a 16. <laughs> so the spider and uh, Bragnock and Bubbles all, uh, all dodge out of the way, and Riley dodge out of the way of this shrapnel. Bragnock uh, does not. Bragnock is... Or, I'm sorry, yeah. not Bragnock. Riley, yeah, yeah. Uh, so Bragnock and Javis each take uh, 1d6 of shrapnel damage as this armor explodes <laughs> outward. Uh, three damage to Reichel Javis. And to brag, knock six damage of shrapnel damage. Ah, uh, oh, curse your overzealous, you guys! You dumb god! I'm sorry, I was kidding. But that armor is destroyed, yeah. Uh, Riley, excellent, uh, excellent turn there. Bubbles, you're up. I'm going back right at the spider. Like I like quickly dodge it out of the way of the shrapnel and then go in again. You can see fueled by just like pretty much blind fear. Okay, take a swing. So that is 15 to hit the spider. Okay. Uh, yes, that does hit the spider. Roll me some so damage. So that damage is 14 damage. Yup. Yeah, that's going to do it for the spider. You go ahead and roll that. Uh, roll ahead. Go ahead and uh, or not roll that. Tell us how that spider dies. Uh, so Bubbles, just pure fury, goes in and whacks straight down. And when she believes that it's no longer moving, just to be sure, she goes in a couple more times and is still just whacking at it with, like, a lot of, like, yeah, yeah, no, not you, and is going to just keep going for the foreseeable future doing that until someone stops her. Okay, I, uh, I will not. Uh, green spider blood is spraying all over all of you. You're getting very messy. Yeah, bubbles, bubbles. I, I think it's dead. You've done it. That's right. She's going. She's going through stuff. All right, let her work it out. Bubbles is kind of gonna adjust her armor, and then walk back over and continue pouring the chalices. That nice. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Uh, Bragnock, okay. Bragnock, like, is picking pieces of shrapnel out of his beard. And his face kind of has that, like, Looney Tunes explosion in your face look where it's, like, all <laughs> covered in soot for some reason. And <laughs> he turns to his cleric companion with this look on his face of almost, like, disbelief that this would have happened. And he's like, I don't know what you just did, but that was just about the sexiest thing I've ever seen. And he's like, <laughs> as like, look of love in his eyes. <laughs> I didn't well, know you could blow stuff up like that. You should have said so. Oh, well, 
I didn't know it was going to explode like that, but um, I guess I was just lucky, I guess. Oh. <laughs> oh, I knew you were good people. I could tell from the beginning you're a good one, you are. But I don't believe that's what you said at the beginning. But um, I do appreciate that. Thank you. I don't you. think I said anything uh, harsh. Oh, that's okay. We don't have to discuss that. I do appreciate it, though. Uh, Bragnock, do not encourage her. That was not the sexiest thing you've ever seen. I am the sexiest thing no, anyone's I'm ever seen. No, I'm sorry. That it was, was reckless. Pretty, it was pretty attractive. I've seen very few like people who can blow up suits of armor. That's like uh, top ten. That's a top ten. Once time I saw a dragon melt a city. That was pretty hot. But like, you know, suit of armor explosion. That's good. Well, regardless, I would like you to use your fake god powers to make my boo-boo go away. And then he holds out his arm where he got some shrapnel. To who? Y you. To Riley. I mean... <laughs> okay, well, we're both clear. I mean, I only have one spell uh... slot left, so I don't know if I'm going to use it on you. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just going to be picky. Maybe you take a short rest. But we, we can, well, we can do a medicine check. Can't I just do a medicine check on him? With my healer's tools? Yeah. You can do a check. Cool. Uh, that's going to be a 12 plus 4, so 16. Okay. Yeah, you're able to use your healer's tools to heal him for, let's say, 1d6 of damage. Of healing. Of healing. I'm sorry. Not damage. Yes. <laughs> uh, that's going to be 4. Okay. Physically, I'm okay. My pride, still a little wounded. Don't worry. We can patch that up as well. From somewhere beyond the wall there in the cellar, uh, you see, there's actually, uh, you're just now noticing kind of built into the wall is a, a door. It's very hard to see. You didn't notice it before. But out comes, uh, you hear a toilet flush, and out comes Jebediah Tulax. And he says, huh? What the hell is going on here? What? What's all this binky? And he looks towards the, de the, the pile of uh, dead spider parts. He's, binky, what the hell did you all do to binky? Uncle Jebediah, you're alive! And I'm gonna, like, bum rush hug him. Oh, okay. no, you're alive. We thought you were dead. We were summoned here for the reading of your will. Yeah, and I was an amulet. <laughs> I don't know who you are, uh, but, uh, yeah, of course, of course, I, I faked my own death. How else was I supposed to get you to come visit an old man? Two years! Two years I haven't seen my niece or nephew. Or that, or that one cleric lady that made me that delicious bacon. So I, uh, I, I set this all up. I, uh, I had you guys, uh, I, I wrote you by Falcon, telling you that, uh, that I had died, when really I had not died. <laughs> I'm very much alive. I did carve my own sarcophagus for when that happens, though. And, it's uh, beautiful, And yeah. I got you all to visit me, and it worked. And, uh, uh yes. I, I'm very happy to see you all. Did you all survive the, uh, the tests I put out for you? Well, yes, but Jebediah, you did not need to um, summon us here under false pretenses. I'm sure we could have visited on our own volition. No, I wouldn't have. Two years! Two years you had to I got life me. back from this, so I'm, I'm actually kind of glad that you put this whole ruse together, personally. Two years you had to come and visit me. Two years I've been here, brewing my very special Tulax IPA, waiting for, for my nieces and nephews and the, the one sexy cleric lady to come back and, and have a toast and have a drink with me. And it never happened. So yes, I put this ruse together. Me and Cornelius, and uh, and, and I finally gotten you here. So Wait, uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. The zombies, what are you think too? Zombies? Oh no, that, that you, you ran into zombies. What are they outside? Oh, yes. There haven't been zombies here in nigh over 150 years. No, I don't know. Well, that's not true. No, the what armor... about the table that attacked us? Oh, and that was me. Yes, that was, that was a mimic I set up. I you weren't supposed to kill person. Binky, though. Did any of you even try to calm Binky down? While you were gone, I, I got a new pet. Uh, a pet, Binky. And uh, Binky was, was my pet, and he was in the stables. I don't know how he got out. He must have heard a commotion and, and got out, and you've, you've murdered Binky. How dare well, you? It was, it, was this, it was this knight here who did it. Uh, Sir Reichel, Jay. Me? Neither your niece or nephew would do such a thing. It was this night here. Really, was really was a shame as I take a, uh, a chalice of his <laughs> IPA and put it in his hand. Oh, oh, well, thank you. Well, I guess I can always go get another spider. Spiders are a well, diamond. If you, open. like, want to take it out on the night, like, that could be fun to watch. 
Okay, first of all, it was not me. Although I would have, because what I hate more than anything evil is <laughs> gross things, and spiders are incredibly gross. So I would have, but I am also very humble on top of being incredibly handsome. So I cannot take credit for where my work that I didn't do. So it was Bubbles that killed it. Um, what? No, no, no. No, Bubbles would never do something like that unless she would be taken out of the wheel, in which case she definitely did. No. Are you going to no. trust the word of the, the niece and nephew that won't even come visit you? Bubbles. I'm happy to see you. I'm super excited. What was Bragnock's reaction? He was like, oh. Oh, you don't even know quarter. who that guy is. And I'm going to point it. I know. Oh, so That's I very true. This. That's very true. I don't. I'm a good friend of Steve. Mm -hmm. Your buddy Steve. Oh, it's Steve. Yeah, where is Steve the goblin? Did the mimic eat him? Apparently he, uh, I don't know. He bar He traded away the amulet. Which is sad. No, he didn't throw it away. I won it from him in a drinking contest. No, oh, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Steve can't hold his liquor. He's not a man <laughs> who knows how to hold his booze. No, he cannot. He's so tiny, a wee bit a goblin. Yeah, not a man at all, one could say. A goblin. A goblin mm -hmm. is what he is, yes. Uh, yeah, I did invite him. I'd, I was afraid he'd been murdered by the, the traps I set. The armor, of course, is me, the mimic. And, uh, and of course, uh, Lizardy the Lizard Man that I had been experimenting on. Not the zombies, though. I want to reiterate, I don't know where the hell those zombies came from. Uh, but anyway, uh, have a drink with me. It's a small constellation prize, since, uh, since let, let, let's be honest, none of you will be getting any inheritance tonight, because I'm still alive. You are in the will, though. So when I do die, uh, you know, you will get the inheritance, but not tonight. So a cheers, a toast to you all for coming out to visit me. Jebediah, uh, before I forget, um, I do think that this belongs to you. And she hands him the the key. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, the key to my chest. Wait, where did you get this? Did you go rifling through my stuff? Well, yes, we were looking for clues as to um, where this ale was. And cataloging our inheritance that we thought we were getting. Right, right, yes, I suppose that makes sense. Well, you won't be getting it, so I, he tucks the key away. He's like, uh, but again, help yourself to as much of this uh, delicious IPA as you'd like. And he says, uh, he says, well, uh, you know what? I feel a little bad. You you are coming out all this far, all this way, and uh, and not getting anything. So I'll tell you what. I'll give you all anyone who can beat me in a uh, in a drinking contest. We'll get uh, let's call it let's call it a uh, an advance on their inheritance. So uh, yes, I have these these here double size steins. Each of you take one of these here double size steins. Double size mm -hmm. stein for mm -hmm. each of you, and uh, take one of these steins. And uh, on the count of three, we'll all tip them back. And uh, anyone who clears their stein and slams it down on this here table before me, it's gonna get uh, a, an extra advanced share of their inheritance. I have so much. I am the mining baron, after all. I have so much. I might as well, I might as well spread it around. Share a little bit. Uh, okay. Well, I'm game. So uh, we're all going to roll. Uh, you have a little bit of a drinking contest here. Uh, you all have to roll uh, a constitution check against Jebediah. So you all tip back at anyone who, well, first of all, who would like to participate? I do not partake. You do not partake, okay. I do not. Bubbles is partaking. Okay. Everyone uh, roll a constitution check. Oh my God. Uh, he's gonna roll with advantage because he's a heavy drinker. Okay, that's better. I got a 16. 15. 15. I got a four. <laughs> oh, no. Okay, it's because you've been drinking so much with your magic. <laughs> the three of you, uh, excluding Riley, who's who doesn't drink, uh, tip your steins back. Chuck, 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 and uh, and the first one to slam their stein down is Bubbles, and then simultaneously, uh, Uncle Jebediah Tulax and Reichel, or uh, I'm sorry, and uh, yeah, and Reichel Javis slam their, slam their steins down, hitting the table. And then, uh, surprisingly, uh, a, a man who you would think, or, or I'm sorry, a dwarf who you would think would be uh, extremely good at this, kind of chokes on their ale <laughs> and finishes I don't last. like IPAs. They're too bitter for me. <laughs> he's no he's fan. been through a lot. He sustained nipple damage, but don't worry. I, I took care of it. You know what else is bitter? Uh, the money you won't be getting. Uh, that's a bitter feeling. It's got to be a bitter taste in your mouth. Because I bubbles, attack him. I attack him. <laughs> okay. I attack him out of rage. Uh, is this an unarmed oh, no. attack? Uh, yeah, of course it is. I, I'm not going to try and kill him. I'm just mad. 
Okay. Beat my inheritance. Bubbles wants to try to intervene if that's possible. Okay. You uh, son of a. Oh, I'll get you. So you're trying oh, to hold I'll him back. I'll break your damn beard off. You're trying to hold him back and restrain him. Uh, I'm bubbles? gonna try to get in between them with my great axe, like blocking any kind of. Or yeah, if it's an unarmed attack, I'm gonna try to get in between. Okay, them. roll me a strength check. That's a four. Okay. Uh, he blows right past you. Uh, <laughs> roll. I would like to cast a spell then. Mm, you do not. You do not have time. Uh, <laughs> he's, he's just. He's just moved right past bubbles, and he's uh, bearing down on Jebediah Tulex. Roll me an attack. 15. That hits. Yeah, describe for me what happens. Yeah, I, I lunge at him when he says I won't get any inheritance. And I wildly swing my fists, shouting that I'll break his beard off. And uh, I pummel him about the face. Ah, 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 you drink like a girl, but okay, stop, stop, stop. Ah, ah, you drink like a girl, but you fight like a dwarf. A man dwarf. Uh... Yeah, so okay, all right. You'll get a share I, of the... I turn, I turn to Bubbles and say, are you going to let him talk to you like that? <laughs> no, I'm not. And then I just pummel him. Oh, oh when I said girl, I didn't mean Bubbles. Bubbles attack roll. Uh, okay, yeah, ro uh, attack. Bubbles unarmed roll is a 17. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, you also succeed. You get to do... Oh, 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 God. Oh, <laughs> It's just like old times with my niece, niece and nephew. Oh, well, stop, stop. I didn't mean it. I apologize. I apologize. And he kind of... Uh, you should be so up. lucky as to drink like yeah, a girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, as, I, as I touch my beard. Yes. And I says, all right. <laughs> fine, fine. Uh, you'll each get an advanced share of your inheritance. Uh, call it a trust, if you will. Something like that. Uh, I'll dole out, uh, let's say, uh, 100 gold coins to each of you. Including Reichel Javis. But Reichel Javis... You, you're here in representation of Steve, is that right? That is. That All right, is I want you to give this money to Steve. Steve gets this money. You understand? I understand. Okay, and he produces a. Uh, Excuse me. A chest uh, from in, inside the room he popped out of. And Wait, uh, hold he, on, that chest was in the bathroom with you. Yeah. Where Where do you keep your gold? I mean, you got a point. All right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and he doles out a hundred gold coins. And uh, and he says, "Well, uh, since you're since you're all out here, uh, please spend the night, uh, spend the weekend with your old uncle Jebediah, because you know it won't be too long before I'm in that casket. And uh, yeah, maybe even uh, let's uh, let's maybe figure out this zombie situation, because uh, I'm I'm seriously troubled by that. But that's for another day. We've got all the time in the world. Does he give Riley a hundred gold too? No, you didn't drink with us. No, no. Okay. <laughs> Just no, checking. This is, Just this is only for those of uh, those of you who, who was... drank or violently attacked me." You had to earn the um, gold. You had I you had to earn my respect. Indeed. Jebediah, yes, I do respect that, but I'm questioning you not on behalf of myself, but on behalf of Reichel Javis. Because mm -hmm. this what? man showed true heresy throughout the entire day, and Steve was not here to prove himself, so I do believe that some portion of that should go to Reichel. Oh, well, I appreciate it, but you know what? A good day's work is its own reward. Well, uh, I'll tell you what, there. Uh, Steve couldn't be bothered to show up, so, um, yeah. Uh, Reichel, you go ahead and, uh, you keep a uh, finder's fee that you think is fair. How does that sound? That sounds great. Excellent. So you all cheers once again, and, uh, uh, continue drinking. You move back up to the, uh, the main room. There's still that hole in the ceiling. You hear a, a screech again. Something's in the skies above and some moans from the woods. But other than that, you're untroubled for the rest of the night. And uh, you pass the night quietly. And that is where we'll call a halt uh, to the to the story of the uh, the will of Jebediah. Uh, yay! yay! Good work, everybody. And you all level up. <laughs> yeah! yeah! Level two? <laughs> yeah. Yes! Uh, thanks, guys. Uh, thank you so much. Wait. Huh? Oh, go ahead. <laughs> level two. Yeah, he was at level one. He just got reconstituted. Yeah, I was about he to say, you were level one the entire time? I feel for you. What level were you guys? Two. I, we never d doled that. When I died, we never like figured out if I got experience for the other adventures. Yeah, you did. You know it, got, it got erased by the end. But I don't know. <laughs> the real experience was the friends I made along the way. Yeah. Uh, guys. Which was just Jebediah. <laughs> I hope I never see you again. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all so much for playing. 
Yeah, can, can, uh, can you guys tell us real quick where we can find you on the interwebs if we want to check you out? There'll be links in the description. Uh, I'm Davis. Uh, the Warp Zone is my YouTube channel. We do uh, nerdy pop culture, sketch comedy, music, um, and just Warp Zone on all of our things. Also, Scare Game Squad is a series I do with Jesse on his channel where we play scary games and um, become friends and get scared. <laughs> become friends. Nice. Uh, Jesse? Good lead becoming, into Jesse. Yeah, becoming friends is the whole point. Is, yeah, we work on that. Well, we became it's, friends. It's process. And we continue to be friends. <laughs> uh, hey, I mean, look, uh, Jesse Cox and everything on uh, YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, places. <laughs> all over except instagram because some beautiful male model has my name but whatever i mean yeah go there too and just <laughs> pretend just mm -hmm. pre for me pretend i'm katie wilson uh you can catch me on my youtube channel legend of katie like zelda but katie uh weekdays at noon i stream uh gameplay lots of games every weekday at noon and you can also catch me playing more tabletop games on official paizo's twitch channel as well as the dat network you can find me on both twitch and youtube slash trisha hershberger i streamed twitch five days a week roughly and every tuesday i do an indie games showcase that works like a game show where the audience gets to vote if a game is awesome or still needs more work um so yeah twitch.tv slash trisha hershberger and then i upload tech stuff sometimes to youtube.com slash trisha hershberger yeah the gong show. and on the internet i'm that girl trish with no i in the girl the gong show the show where you uh yeah your name video games i love, love that show um excellent yeah. cool so yes please check out all these people leave in the comments uh, anything you would like to see in a D&D &D adventure. Specific monsters you like, uh, scenarios, anything like that. And uh, we'll see what we can do in the future. Um, that's it for us. Uh, we'll see you all next time. Later. I'm Bubbles. Oh yeah, well I'm a spider. Fight, 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 fight. Hey! Thank you for watching. That was my first time being a DM. I apologize if it was a bit rocky. If you want to see what YouTube thinks is best for you, click over here. If you want to see the last time we played D&D, &D, Click over here. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit that like. Maybe leave me a comment. And I will see you all next time.